All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our dear president, Attorney Myra Anwi Tejo, and to all of our students, good afternoon. I know that all of you are really excited for this afternoon's webinar, since this is our first ever webinar on pilot training conducted by the Adventure Flight Education Sports Incorporated. As we all know that FS, or Adventure Flight Education Sports Incorporated, is an authorized training organization certified by the CAA with branches in Mactan Cebu and Davao International Airport. But before we formally start, I would just like to inform all of our students to please grab your paper and pen handy so that you can write all those important details that our speakers will be talking today. Because I am sure and I'm definitely sure that you can apply that one in the near future. All right? And may I just remind you to please turn off your mic. And if you have questions later, I know that our speakers will be answering that and we will be more than willing to answer that one later on our webinar. So let's start. To formally start uh, to start our training for today or webinar for today, let me call on our first speaker. Our first speaker is a graduate from Asian International School of Aeronautics and Technology with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Aircraft Maintenance Technology and currently a flight instructor of AFIS. Wow. So please help me welcome our first speaker for today, Captain Dathan Bacchus. Captain, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Sir Dwight, for that introduction. And uh, before I start, I would like to greet a pleasant afternoon to Sir Dwight, to our accountable manager and uh, president Vice at Mamaira, and uh, to our chief flight instructor at AFES Cebu, Captain Harvey Chua, and uh, to our AFES admin at Cebu, Ma'am Tita. And to the uh, ladies and gentlemen, or shall I say the future pilots of uh, airline company, good afternoon again. So I am here to talk about the stages of being a pilot. Choosing a flight school and uh, what are the requirements, the first step of uh, being a pilot? Hi, Captain. Uh, interrupt po kadali ha. Uh, wala presentation. Yeah. Uh, so before I start, I would like to introduce myself first for a while. Uh, we cannot see the presentation. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Does everyone is on my screen now? Yes, Cap. Okay. Let's start. I would like to introduce myself first. Again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. My name is Captain Dayton Bacchus. That is that is me during the COVID lockdown. I have more time for myself. This is me now. Uh, stressed again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm 23 years old by this time. Maybe you're thinking now, way too young. That's because I started early. And later on, you will know how. I'm currently, currently residing at Matina, Davao City. I'm a holder of commercial pilot license rated with Cessna 152 and Cessna 172. I'm a flight and uh, currently the chief ground instructor here at Davao. I'm a holder of ELP level four or English language proficiency. I'm a class one medical holder and I am also a holder of RROC aircraft issued by NTC, 
RROC stands for Restricted Radio Operator Certificate. And the uh, total flying times as of this moment is uh, estimated at 850 hours. So my college background, my study background, I studied first at ADU or at or Ateneo de Davao University, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering for two years. And then I stopped uh, for family reasons. Uh, because I found out that there are too many engineers in our family and architects. I want to dig my own way. That's why I'm here now. I shifted to a two-year program in ISAT. And then eventually uh, upgraded myself to a Bachelor of Science in Aircraft Maintenance Technology. I did my private pilot ground course at the year of 2015 and obtained my license in February uh, 2016. I did also uh, study commercial pilot ground course at AFES in the year of 2017 and being and a holder of the CPL during July 2018. I did my flight and ground instructor rating still at AFES at August and uh, finished December 2018. So uh, that's me, just a brief background of myself. Now let's go to uh, for today's agenda. So in uh, becoming a pilot, you need to ask yourself first, why do you want to be a pilot? And uh, the answer should be, the answer should be, it should be your passion. It should not be because pilot has high salary. It should not just be that. It should also be, it's your passion because if you're not doing anything, I mean, uh, if I'm not just talking about being a pilot, I'm talking about everything. If you're doing something, you should love some, you should love it. It should be your passion because without passion, everything would just be hard. Okay. So back then I was also a student. And this is one of my questions myself. And I found this question that it is not just my problem, but it's, it is also the problem of the most student pilots. How to choose a flying school? I myself made three, three criteria about this one. First is equipment. Next, flight instructors and the cost. Let me explain why. Let's start with equipment. Your office or your adventure flight, let's start with the ground school. We have spacious classrooms. Imagine yourself if you're inside a classroom that is very narrow. The uh, study has, is not conducive. The learning is not conducive. So a spacious classroom means a better ventilation. And the temptation in cheating is not, it's not that big because, yeah, it's spacious. There is space between students. And temptation in using cell phones, distractions from learning, is not a factor. Next, we have air-conditioned classrooms. Now, study shows that if you are on a well-ventilated area, learning is more conducive rather than in an area which is not that uh, very well uh, air-conditioned. You know what I'm talking about? If you're just using ceiling fans, electric fans, Next, chairs that are comfortable to use to. Now, AFEST uses armchairs 
chairs with the armrest. So I know a school that uses a armchair that is a wood. Now, I've been through that. It hurts like a little bit. And it's not that good to sit on. Imagine yourself sitting on that chair for eight hours. Next, we have equipped with a whiteboard. Now, I'm not saying that it should be. Flying school should have those whiteboard. But I'm also saying that there are flying schools that don't use whiteboard. They utilize blackboards and chalks. And uh, how about those students who have asthma? We, have equip, we are equipped with different instructional materials. We utilize uh, miniature aircraft. We're equipped with either projector or monitor to provide a better visual and audio presentation. We're equipped with a simulator to provide a better illustration of the theories and procedures. So let me show you some pictures of what I'm talking about. As you can see on the lower left portion of your screen, those four students standing up, those are my students who are now graduates of private pilot ground course and now a PPL holder or private pilot license holder. On their back is the Peter and ISAT. We utilize that one uh, to provide a better illustration of my theories and procedures inside the cockpit. The uh, upper right portion of your screen, that is on the Cebu classroom. As you can see, they're using aircraft. Next, still under equipment, what aircraft do And Cessna 172s. Take note, our Cessna 172 has two types of engine not just the reciprocating engine, and we also utilize a diesel engine CD-135. Your CD-135 engine is one of the most uh, highest technology, advanced technology in uh, engine of uh, Cessnas. And I feel safer flying this engine because it is more efficient in economy and fuel economy, and also reliable in engine performance. We have modernized instruments. We just don't utilize the analog instruments. We also have the digital instruments. Equipped with a portable Garmin GPS, the ERA 500. I myself is equipped with ERA 660. Now, having GPS on board makes everything safer, not just easier. Because up there, you only rely on your map to navigate and there's no signage out there up there that states that this way to Davao 57 kilometers this way to Tago 107 kilometers so you rely more on your map now having the GPS on board makes everything safer that's what I love about Athis next we are equipped with a handheld radio now not every schools have this one they ask their students to have it, to buy them for themselves. Now, handheld radio is uh, very important in, uh, when your radio on board becomes a function, you have your handheld radio. Having this on board makes you more safer because up there, communication is a vital factor. We have a very well-maintained aircraft. Yes, I don't fly. I myself don't fly with an engine or an aircraft that is not well-maintained. Your aircraft is not like a car that when your car shuts off in the middle of the road, you just go and park on the side. Your aircraft is not like that. You cannot open the hood up there. Let's say, uh, wait for a minute. Let me check what's happening on my engine. I myself 
Don't fly if my aircraft is not well maintained. Your aircraft at AFIS are like common engines supplied one, by One Stop Aviation USA. Yes. Now, I'm not dropping name about any schools, but I know a school that utilizes substandard parts. They settle with, uh, this could do. Pwede na to. Now, in AFIS, we don't do that. We play by the book. We are standard. And yes, we have Redbird Simulator. A very good simulator. Let me show you some pictures. On your upper left portion of your screen, those are the students and instructors at uh, AFIS Cebu in a CB135. On your upper right portion of your screen, that is me beside the CB135. The next picture is the engine of the CB135, very lovely. And on your lower right portion of your screen is the 1004, the actual photo of it flying. This is the inside cockpit of our aircraft. As you can see, we utilize analog and also digital. And this is a 152, an actual photo of our aircraft flying through the air. A 152 and uh, our Redbird simulator at Cebu. Flight instructors. We're now done with equipment. Let's proceed to flight instructors. There are two bits of flight instructors. FIs who are teaching to build doors, and FIs that simply like to teach. The question here is, would you rather have an instructor that cares more about ours or an instructor that cares about you? Now here at AFIS, we have five flight instructors and five ground instructors that are very well equipped with the theories and standardized procedures to produce a competent and high quality pilot that every aviation company needs, or what we call as the sharp pilots. Now I myself, I, I love to teach. I like to produce pilots that someday uh, when I buy an airline ticket, go inside the, the Airbus, the flight attendant will come to me and uh, offer me a cup of coffee saying that, sir, from the uh, pilot in command, he is your previous students, student, and uh, he is giving this to you. Oh, I love that feeling. I want to see my students fly up in the sky safely and sharp. Now, these are the students who are being released solo. As you can see, they are being poured with water. That is what we call as the dudu bath. This is now a commercial pilot. This one also. And this one is a private pilot. And this is me in my first student release. Now, after the uh, flight instructor, let us go to the cost. Cost. Cost will vary between flight schools depending on the location of the flight school, type of airport use, and equipment use. Now, your flight school, their rates depend on their airport use because the rate at Davao is different at Cebu. The rate in Cebu is different at Manila. That the rate in Manila is different from the Clark, they have different rates. So that's the reason why the cost will vary. It depends on the location of the flight school. And research, research on your hidden cost. Now I know some schools that do this because flying is not cheap, it comes with a price. 
So their marketing strategy is to cut down the price and then put the remaining price somewhere in their brochure that is on the smaller font, somewhere that cannot be uh, find, be found by an eye that is not, uh, this not looking for it. They put it in a very small font saying that 7,000 per hour is, is excluding with landing fee, with fee, and the documentation fee. Now here at AFES, what you see on your brochure, or on your flyers, that is what it is. Yeah, that is what I'm talking about, landing fees. Because some flying schools, they say, they say that our rate is 7,000 per hour, and then when you fly one hour, and the accounting staff will give you the, the total. And you will be shocked that why it is, what, why it is not 7,000 where I flew only one hour. So there is a landing fee. Then you have to live with it. So this is a sample of our package here at Davao. Private pilot, uh, commercial pilot, and instrument rating. You'll finish a total of 169 hours for 2.1, roughly 2.1. I know what you're thinking now. Yes, it's quite expensive, but I don't want you to think about that. I want you to think about it as an investment. I have a sample uh, video here of our student being really solo. That is in the vow. And this is the Dodubat that I am talking about. Dodubat is a tradition where pilots being released will encounter this tradition. Congrats! Yay! 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 <laughs> now, every best feeling of a pilot is their first release. As a pilot about their first release or their solo flight, you will hear a love story. Now I get another video here. This is a former student. PC1004 confirm able to land long. Roger, I'm able to land long. RPC1004. Roger, arrange flight. Continue approach. Report final runway 17. Continue approach. Uh... This guy is on a long landing approach in Tumblr. He flew solo from Davao to Tumblr. Look at that guy. Nice flare, touchdown, both main wheel. 2790 landed. 2790 Roger. Taxi Charlie to the ROM. Taxi Charlie to the ROM, 2790. Do you know where this guy is? He is now the one that is talking to you. That is me. Now, again. Just a little recap, my three criteria in choosing a flight school is the equipment, the flight instructors, and the cost. And I find these three criteria being satisfied only at AFES. That's why I did my training at AFES, I graduated at AFES, and I'm now teaching here at Adventure Flight.
Now, let's talk about the stages of pilot training. First step in pilot training is your student pilot license or the SPL. Commonly known now as the SPA or the Student Pilot Authorization. Next to your student pilot is your uh, private pilot license. The state requires you to have a minimum of 40 hours. Take note that's a minimum of 40 hours. The range normally plays to 40 hours to 80 hours. But that depends on how fast you finish your lesson. And if the flight school says that you are now a certified private pilot, you could apply for your PPL at CAAP. Next to PPL is, you, is your CPL or your commercial pilot license. The state requires you to have at least 150 hours of flight hours. Now, this is just minimum. There are other requirements such as 70 hours PIC, cross-country flight time, but I would not talk about here it here. Uh, we will talk it about we'll talk it uh, we will discuss it on our air law if I would be seeing you in uh, adventure flight pi private pilot ground course. Next to the commercial pilot license is your instrument rating. Now if you're planning for an airline you have to acquire this rating because airlines require their pilots to be rated with instrument. Now let's discuss the SPL application. Let's discuss your first step in pilot training. How do you acquire your SPL or your SPA? The state requires you to have the class to medical certificate. In order to have your class to medical certificate, you need these medical requirements. The chest x-ray, dental, ECG, refraction, audiometry, urinalysis, CBC, drug test, blood chem, the physical exam by CAP doctor. You must be thinking now, CAP, that's a lot. Yes, it is. That's why you need to be healthy. If you guys have vices such as smoking, drinking too much alcohol, I strongly suggest that you stop that. And as you can see, there are a lot of these requirements out here. And you need to be healthy. Yes, a pilot need to be healthy. After acquiring your medical certificate, your student pilot license requirements are Class 2 medical certificate, and BI clearance, and birth certificate. Now, if you're planning to enroll at Adventure Flight, our school requirements are your high school report card. If you are now a college graduate, we require you to have your TOR and diploma, a photocopy of your birth certificate, and yes, we need also a photocopy of your NBI clearance. We need to make sure that our trainees are not terrorists and we don't want other 7-Eleven scenario. We need your 2x2 two two picture with blue background, 8 of them. 1x1 one one picture, still a blue background, 10 of them. If yes, you're planning to enroll, we need you to have your computer. Flight computer is not the computer. That is what you're seeing on the internet cafes. It's not a CPU. It's a computer. It computes. So have your flight computers, your rotating plotter, which is very helpful in acquiring the distance from one point to another point and acquiring the heading on your maps, your pilot logbook for flight training, and a headset for flight training. All these items are available at Mr. Danilo Adato, the ISAT property custodian. His office is near the clinic. Now, if you want to enroll at AFIS, payment channel are here. We don't accept cash. Imagine if you're going to give me 
Say for example, you're going to give me 2 million cash and I'll be running with it. Wala kayong habol sa akin. So you need to deposit that our video bank. No deposit, no flight schedule. Step one, deposit funds for at least 10 hours of flight time. Students will be reminded to top up their payment once their balance falls below two hours of flight time. But let me remind you, two hours is, is just good for about one week. Because every flight, you will have at least one hour 30 to two hours of flight time. Step two, inform AFES of the deposit made scan or send a photo of your deposit slip to AFES who will acknowledge the payment. Send it to uh, the AFES Davao branch admin if you are enrolling at Davao. And if you're enrolling at Cebu, you could send it to Mamtita, our admin there. Step three, admin will reach out to discuss students' availability for flight schedule. If student, if student do not receive any call or message after one to two business days, student may contact the scheduler at FSW and FSCBU contact numbers. Guys, if you are flying at Davao, please contact Davao schedules, scheduler. If you're flying at Cebu, contact Cebu scheduler. Do not contact Cebu if you're flying at Davao. So these are, this is our uh, contact numbers. Ms. Tita Sereno, the AFES Cebu admin, that is her number. Ms. Mayan Jimenez, our Davao branch admin. Our chief flight instructor, GI, who is also a ground instructor, Captain Harvey James Chua, and my contact number. Okay. Now this is the wings of AFES. Once was just a dream, now slowly becoming a reality, taking life one step at a time. Now I'm going to finish my uh, speech here with a quote of mine. Fly Afes. Fly Afes and let your dreams take flight. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for that one, Captain. And I know that a lot of you are really interested on in becoming a pilot someday. So what are you waiting for? You can enroll now and you can contact those people na naka flash on your screens. And again, always remember, according to Captain um, Dathan Bacchus, that do it not because of money, but because it is your passion. And always remember that becoming a student pilot is an investment. Thank you so much, Captain. That was indeed a... Um, a great way to start our webinar for this afternoon. So our next speaker, he is the Chief Flight Instructor of AFES. Please help me welcome Captain Harvey Chua. Captain, take it away. And while Captain Harvey is still um, making sure that he would be able to present all of his slides for today, I'm just I would just like to remind all of you that you can erase all of your questions later after all of our speakers has done um, their task and whatnot. Please do bear with us. And I know that you have a lot of questions, so you can hold your horses for now, and later we will be able to answer that one. No, we cannot hear you, Pap. Hello? Yes. yes. Uh, how about now? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay. 
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Captain Harvey James Chua, uh, one of the co-client instructors of uh, Dave and Bacos here at Adventure Fly Education and Sports. So uh, I've been working, uh, I was once assigned uh, in Davao also, flying uh, for about a year and reassigned here again in Cebu. So uh, actually, Cap Dave and Bacos co practically covered everything. So uh, I don't have anything to add anymore except that um, I wanted to bring up this topic, uh, which I'm sure you're eager to ask also. Um, we all know that um, COVID-19 has uh, directly impacted um, the aviation industry. Uh, uh, we all know that uh, most of the industries are um, hit by this pandemic uh, as well as the airline industry. So um, the, the, the question is, uh, most of you probably would be asking later is, um, is it a good time to be a pilot now? So um, we want uh, to listen to you. Uh, just type yes on the uh, chat box. If you agree, just say yes. Is it it's a good time? And no, if it's a not a good time. And uh, we would uh, I would like to answer why. So uh, if you could just uh, type your answers. Yes, would be you would like to be a pilot and it's a good time to be a pilot now. And no is it's not a good time to be a pilot because uh, of the pandemic. So I'm seeing yes, 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 three yes versus zero no. Five yes. <clears throat> Six yes. Seven yes. So I, so probably um, everybody agrees that now is the best time to be a pilot. So I would like to, I would just like to elaborate further why uh, now is the best time to be a pilot. It's not about marketing because we have to make money, but because um, most of you plan to be uh, working the airlines, right? Spending this much. So uh, I'm sure you want to be an airline pilot soon. Now, in order for to be an airline pilot. Uh, you have to have, you have to meet certain requirements, which is mostly, you have, uh, one of the criteria is you have to have enough uh, flight hours or experience uh, uh, just to qualify for their position as an entry-level first officer. Just to give you an example, uh, if, uh, for Cebu Pacific as a local airline, they would be asking 2,000 hours if you, uh, if you only have a single engine time on a Cessna, uh, just to qualify for the job interview. Now, um, news is saying, uh, news are saying that uh, the airline industry will recover two or three years time, right? So why is it the best time to start your pilot training now? Because this is the best time now because you have approximately two to three years to um, nurture your skills, gain that knowledge, and build that experience. So. Uh, once that three years is over, then you are really uh, well equipped and well qualified to apply as your uh, as an airline pilot, which is probably the best reason why you are joining us here today. So um, uh, that's it for me, and um, I hope you keep the dream alive, and uh, I hope one day you will achieve it. All right, thank you so much for the on, Captain. And I know that all of you are still eager to become a pilot, even though we are currently, um, the aviation industry is currently impacted with the COVID-19 or the pandemic that we have right now. But soon, aviation industry will spread its wings and fly again. So let's just keep the faith burning. Let's just keep our faith burning. And next, we have our question and answer portion. Again, this is the best time for all of you to raise all of your questions. We have Tita Serena to answer all of your um, queries about fees and licenses, right? So if you wanted to be recognized, please comment down your name so that you can be recognized. And I believe Ma'am Serena or Tita Serena will be able to answer all of your questions with regards to fees and licenses. Let's start. Good afternoon, everyone. Do you hear me? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. Any questions with regards to fly training fees, um, licenses, how to process medical? It's open for question and answer portion already. Magdita, maybe you can answer how they can process the medical and SPL license at this time, COVID time. Yeah, um, medical this time we can apply through online or we can send it via um, LDC to, to Manila. So what we can do is we have to send the application. Um, I will show you the application. So this is the CAAP Aeromedical Advisory. So as they have in this advisory, they they inform us that uh, there will be a deferment of medical examination and examination by a licensed medical practitioner other than CAAP designated aviation medical examiner. So what is that mean? So. This means that you can do your medical outside GAAP or even in Davao, any laboratories. You can bring your um, application, medical certificate. So as you can see, you can click this one. So we have to uh, fill this first page with your uh, details, name, uh, First item under B, so you have to put your name, telephone number, uh, fax number, email address, height, weight, hair. So all your personal details will be uh, filled up here also. And um, in the item D, so have you ever in your life been diagnosed with, with, had, or do you present to have any of the following? So you should check this one if you have frequent or severe headaches. So once you fill up the first page, uh, you will let your doctor or the one, uh, the physician that you will be going to in the laboratory and then fill this at the second page at the back of this application form. So you let the physician fill this data here and then let him sign under uh, Q, Medical Examiner's Analysis and Declaration. So you have to make sure everything in this uh, application has been filled up by the medical practitioner and at the second page and then at the first page you can you have to make sure also that every detail has been uh, filled up after that you need to give this form for the eye examination report to your ophthalmologist so you have to fill in also the form the personal part a your personal data and then part b examination details And then let the examiner sign all these details for your eye examination report. Then once you're done with this one, you have to give it to Miss Anne in Davao or in here in Cebu. You have to give it to me. Then I'll be the one to send it to Manila. Any questions?
guys again feel free to raise all of your questions because um so that it will be answered by our speaker and making sure that guided put us uh, atong dream to become a pilot and Athos will be able to provide I'll uh, to provide and answer all of your theories so questions now you can raise your questions now All right, I guess um, a lot of you, the, the explanation of Captain Dathan and um, the explanation of Captain Harvey Chua was very loud and clear, and we don't have any questions. So again, um, in the future, you wanted to apply and you wanted to um, become a student pilot, feel free to message those numbers that was presented by Captain Dathan Bacchus so that you can, um, again, ask for those uh, fees and whatnot. So with that being said, let me turn you over for our um, closing remarks to our president, Attorney Myra Ann We Tejio. Ma'am, good evening. Captain Harvey, do you want to add something? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to add that um, probably if they're shy and asking a question, they could just type it on the chat box so that we could just read it. Uh, I'm okay. pretty sure they have a lot of questions in mind. Okay. Probably ulaw lang. Okay, so while I'm talking and those of you who still want to ask questions, you can still type while I talk. So, um, good. Afternoon again, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar by AFES about pilot training. Now, I have some listed some questions here that um, Tita, your mic is on. All right. So I have list, listed here some questions that um, that keep recurring. Okay. Um, Tita. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just muted you, Mam Tita. Um, okay, so one of the questions is, how long does it take to complete flight training? Well, as you saw there, it takes around uh, less than 200 hours to complete your commercial pilot uh, license. So if you think about 200 hours, it's really fast. But then, of course, each time you fly, you fly around maybe maximum two, three hours, between two and three hours each flight. And um, that doesn't happen every day. We'll schedule you and uh, maybe in a week you can fly two or three times. So I have seen students who finish it. The fastest that I've seen is um, uh, compress is you can finish it in a year and a half. You know, if you're really just doing flight training. And I've also seen students who have done it for six years and they're not done yet uh, because they have other things that is going on at the same time. Or uh, maybe they have financial difficulties. So they are not able to complete the payment or do the payment and fly. Because in AFES, what we do is we allow you to pay on a 10-hour chunks because... 2.1 million is a big amount of money. So what we do is we, you, you were able to do it on fairly small installment basis. I say fairly small because if you do 10 hours, um, that's just 5% of your 200 hour requirement, less than 200 hour. So again, if you're asking how long it will take you, it really depends on you. If you are schooling right now, 
And I've seen that also. Um, students who fly and go to school at the same time, even though when there was face-to-face -face classes, they are able to do that because uh, the flight training are in the morning, scheduled in the morning. Normally, it's the third and fourth year students who can do this, who can manage flight training and uh, third and fourth year student in ISAP. You know? So that's one thing. And another, so that's just clear. I didn't give you a hard and fast answer because it really depends on how much time you put in. And um, if you can do it in one year, yes, you can finish it in a year and a half. And that's fast already. Okay. So another question that I keep hearing is, uh, why don't ISAP have a Bachelor of Science in Flying? Now, there are schools in Manila that offer Bachelor of Science in Flying, and they call it by another name, Bachelor of Science, I think, in Aviation. And the reason why we don't have a Bachelor of Science in Flying, because if you look at flying, the ground school portion, example for private pilot, is less than 100 hours. So flying is equivalent to learning how to drive, but in the sky. You know? So did you have to get a Bachelor of Science to learn how to drive a car? No, right? So it's the same for flying. It's a technical course. You have to have theory behind you, but it doesn't require you to have a Bachelor of Science in flying in order to fly. And if you have a Bachelor of Science in flying, and let's say you don't become a pilot, no? if you don't become a pilot, you have nothing to fall back on. So I, um, in ISAT, we, we don't want to offer a Bachelor of Science in flying because you can do it uh, through the pilot train, the ground school of pilot training. And even if you have a Bachelor of Science in flying, you still have to do the ground school of pilot training. Because in Cebu, there are schools in Cebu that offer Bachelor of Science in flying. And after they graduate, they, they still have to do the ground school because the ground school under the flying school is what is accredited by Taap. You know? So that's why we don't have a Bachelor of Science in flying. And then... Um, Another question that I, I, I encounter is, do you have to be good in math to be a pilot? Always I hear this. And the answer is, you have to know math. You have to have algebra because there are some uh, questions in your ground school that involves algebra, but nothing beyond that. Nothing about calculus. There's nothing beyond that. It's plain algebra. You, you have to be able to solve basic algebraic solution, uh, equations. You know? So you don't have to be super good in math. And um, now, one thing about flying school, if you're out there looking for a flying school, always, always um, look at the maintenance. How do they maintain the planes? And one, I find this uh, very easy, what I do to check out a plane, even without, without opening up the, you know, the engine and all. Um, listen to the engine. You know how it is when you have a car and you know when the engine sounds good and the, when, when the engine just rattles away and you know there's something wrong with that engine. It's the same with your aircraft. You know? Listen to the engine and compare it with another aircraft whose engine is you know, sounding this way and sounding that way. And for me, that is a very uh, easy uh, like first step guide on, you know, is this is this um, aircraft well maintained? Other than that, of course, you're in maintenance school, so you should be able to check you know, the um, uh, how well the aircraft is being maintained. Because each time you go up there, it's your life at stake. You know? So um, unfortunately, we've had a lot of crashes in flying schools. The last one, I think, was Sambuanga. 
there was a flying school plane that was being used and they were doing something, they were evacuating something, but that plane also um, landed, crashed in the sea. And I think last year we had a few um, uh, plane crashes in Luzon. If you don't know that, please look, look this up because, because flying uh, entails risk. And before you go in, you have to know that it entails risk. Yes, the aircraft is insured, but then what insurance are we talking about if, you know, you, somebody loses his life in flying? We do all the best we can in maintenance, in ensuring that our, our FIs are not risk takers, because even if you know how to fly, if you are not a disciplined person and you want to take risks that's not the type of students that we want to entertain in afresh you know? the people that we are want to entertain are those who can follow procedures and that's the type of pilots um, commercial airlines also want to hire they want to see if you can follow procedures so Another thing that um, Dathan emphasized earlier, Captain Dathan emphasized earlier, was um, you have to be physically fit to maintain your uh, license. And this happened last year. Kaap raised the standard for health requirement in uh, pilots. They required additional medical tests. And we had a few students who failed. You know? Their cholesterols were too high. And these were not people who were overweight. These were just ordinary you know, students. So um, if you're not careful, if you're not being careful with what you eat and how you exercise and keep yourself fit, you're not going to make it. You have to make that conscious, conscious effort to keep fit and to eat healthy because I myself was surprised to learn that there were a lot of people who failed the exam because of their cholesterol levels. There were some uric acid issues, you know, but mostly cholesterol levels. So those are things that I listed down here as um, frequently asked questions on such um, uh, seminars. And um, Again, I want to emphasize that flying is not cheap. You know, it's 2.1 million. And you really have to talk it over with your parents if this is what you really want. Not by default, not because you don't know what else to do in life, because you shouldn't be flying because you don't know what else to do in life. Um, it should really be something that you want to do from you know from when you were either when you were young or right now you can't see yourself doing anything else but flying because look if you stop halfway you, your license won't be of any use what do i mean if you stop halfway um the first license you get is a student pilot license that allows you to fly with an fi just like when you're driving a student license. So after you get the student pilot license, you go for an exam. They call it a check ride because it's a practical exam. Of course, before you go for that practical exam, your flight instructor will release you. Release means what they meant was you will be flying on your own. It's just a pattern. Patterning, you just, you just um, take off and then you go around and then you land again. You know, that's release. You should be able to do that before you go for your check ride, your private pilot license check ride. Now, imagine if you don't complete your pilot training, you don't finish the commercial because of one reason or the other, you know, which could be health, financial, time, you know, your motivation, if you don't finish that and you just end up with your private pilot license, what can you do with a private pilot license? Basically nothing, unless you buy your own plane and fly your own plane, okay? So you, you can't just stop halfway. 
you have to go all the way. And all the way means you finish your commercial and then you work as either whatever work that comes by or you do additional rating which costs another chunk of money before airlines will entertain you, okay? So pilot training is take serious thought. You have to be the best, and then you really have to be determined, okay? So um, when I say after your commercial license, you end up with around 200 hours, how do you get from 200 hours to 2,000 hours? Because 2,000 hours is where the commercial airlines will talk to you for an interview, not to hire you, for an interview. So how do you get from 200 to 2,000? There are several ways. You can be like Dathan and Harvey, you become FIs. But think, only the very best students will become FIs. No, not everyone will become FIs, so you have to be the best. Or some people who don't like teaching, uh, they become general aviation pilots. General aviation means um, the smaller, non-commercial airplanes. But honestly, in the Philippines, there are not that many general aviation pilots. But that's another avenue. And in the VAL, we have spray pilots. You can also become a spray pilot. But note that the hours that you fly in a spray plane does not count towards your 2,000 because airlines consider spray planes a different type of planes, a different type of aircraft. So instead of 2,000, they will require a higher number of hours if you've been flying spray planes. So those are the different avenues for you to acquire the 2,000 hours that is required by airlines. Another way, which is the most expensive way, is for you to go for type rating. So you go to another school. There's a school in Manila or in Bangkok or in Indonesia where you pay to have your Airbus type rating. It might cost you, well, it costs you around, I believe, close to two million. And, but again, it doesn't give you the number of hours. You might have the type rating, but you don't have the number of hours. So even then, airlines might not even talk to you. you know? So it, there's a gap. There's a gap after flight school and application to commercial airlines. You have to know that. I cannot just tell you that after you graduate from commercial, you will get hired. No, that's not the reality. But I must say that there was a time, um, I think around two years, two years back, when the airline industry was just, you know, booming. So they had a lot of pilot shortage. Now, at that time, there were people who only had 500 hours and they were hired. Okay? That's because they were short of pilots. You know? One aircraft, I believe, requires three pilots to support it. So, you know, they, they, had, they, they bought a lot of uh, planes, both Cebu Pacific and PAL, both bought a lot of planes. So they had to fill those empty slots. But after that, when they filled that, it was closed again. No? So when it's closed again, it's back to 2000. So um, those are the things that you need to consider when you um, decide to start your flying lesson. Um, okay. Do we have online ground school option? Yes, we do. And how much will it cost? It was uh, shown, the package. Look, when you, it's not an option. Um, I have here a question. Do we have online ground school option and how much will it cost? So online ground school is not an option because it's part of your pilot training. The private pilot uh, portion has um, first the ground school, and then the flight hours. 
So the ground school is compulsory. It's not an option. So uh, when you normally, you take your ground school first, you finish that, and then you go on to flight school. You can pay for your ground school portion first, and then you go into flight school. But because the health screening standard of CAAP has been so stringent, I would really encourage you to go for your medical exam first. Because what if you finish your online ground school and you find out that you did not pass the CAAP medical exam? Your ground school is put to waste. Okay? So if you're decided on this, you do the medical exam first. You know? So uh, how much it is, um, how much is the ground school PITA? Or anyone? That is 68,750, ma'am. Okay. How many hours is that? It's 110 hours. 110 hours. And there are nine subjects? Yes. Nine subjects. So lately, ground school, of course, has been conducted online as well by Google Meet. And that is how we're going to conduct it as well. Even before, uh, for ground school, there's always a small class, like four. That's already a lot. Four or five is already a lot. So now it will still be that number and it will be conducted online. There's really, I don't think there's an issue of conducting it online. So if you are interested, um, we should really do the medical first and uh, Yeah, I will, I will text it. You can, um, you can contact us for office is um, Mam May. Uh, you have the number of Mam May. Ah, office maintenance. Compita uh, office maintenance. What is the email address? Uh, office, yes, office maintenance. Office maintenance as gmail.com. That is the email contact of Mam May, who is the coordinator here in Davao. If you are interested uh, to do your medical and then ground school. Okay? Mampita, so they don't have to go to Manila anymore to get their student pilot license. No need, ma'am. No need? Okay. Yes. All they right. just have to send the um, form to me and then we will be sending it to Manila. Okay. So the form already has list of what your doctor needs to check. And you also have to go to the eye doctor also. So complete the form and we'll send it to Manila. Okay. Mam May's contact number is there on the chat box. So any more questions? Mom, from Jensen, how can I process my medicals? The same, you contact Mam May. We will email you the requirements. And once you complete that, we will send it to Manila. Okay, this is the first time that we're doing this because before all student, student pilot license applicants had to go Manila. to Manila. So this is the first time we're doing this. Um, if it's going to take a while, no, what I'm saying is expect it to take a while. So if you really want this, you should already start. All our documents in Manila is taking quite long. No, this is a government agency that unfortunately is not very efficient. Okay. So anything else? Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, any other comments? 
Pastor Harvey, Kapdatan. Um, Prince has a question. Sure. Uh, ah, okay. The, the question is worth it din po ba applying if after pa mag graduate or if na no work? Actually, it depends on you. Uh, for as long as uh, if your goal is to work in the airline, uh, we would really um, we would really advise you to get your uh, bachelor's degree because uh, that is actually one of the requirements, basic requirements. Uh, unless uh, there is a, there is a but, unless if your flying experience really exceeds the your uh, educational background, then they would consider. But that is that is the hard part. So uh, I I think that you finish your college degree first, or if you have the time, you can do it simultaneously for as long as it can fit your schedule. Um, or if na na work, actually it depends on you. Um, I'll, I'll share with you my 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 story. Um, I started my flight training way back 2005 when I was still uh, young. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> when I just graduated high school, um, and uh, after that, our business actually went down. So my family cannot um, support my flying anymore. So uh, what I did was I w worked for six years in the hotel industry, save up the amount of money needed to uh, send myself to to the flying school, and. After 11 years, I finally achieved my commercial pilot license without my uh, parents spending any pass of uh, So I, I hope that answers your question. As it, the, uh, the answer to your question is really, it depends on your pace. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I think um, that's about it, no? So, Sir Dwight? All right, thank you so much for that one, ma'am. And again, thank you so much to our speakers for um, tonight's, or oh, we have um, a Hubble question, ma'am, from Mark Garvin Yuma. How many Cessnas 172s and 152s in Davao School has? Uh, right now, the bow has two 152s and one 172. All right. So, um, Mark, that answers your question about it. All right. So, again, thank you so much, everyone, for attending our first ever webinar for pilot training conducted by AFEDS. And again, as what Mamayra has mentioned, only the best student becomes an FI or flight instructor. So technically, if you're going to be enrolling yourself in IFS, you will learn nothing, no one from the best. And again, thank you so much, everyone, for attending this um, webinar. And I hope that you're going to be having a great night and a great day ahead of you. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you so much to our speakers, Captain Dathan, um, Tita Serena, and Captain Harvey Chua. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.